a force to be reckoned with when he gets in the league. And on to David Irving, who was on Instagram smoking a blunt, saying that he's quitting the NFL. Uh, He didn't need to say that he was quitting. Uh, By him smoking on Instagram, he already... He he already did that just by him being on there. Now, I do think, I do think it is going to change eventually. And if you continue to, if you continue to have all these states come out and say that it's legal, I don't think the NFL can say, well, in our in our sector, we're going to say that you can't and that you will not be able to to, uh, to smoke marijuana because I do believe it has uh, particular purposes that it can serve as far as healing, as far as recouping, as far as all of that. Uh, David Irving, though, will not be playing next year. Uh, I would definitely say that 100 percent. Randy Gregory, it sounds like will not be playing next year. Uh, which that does make it tough uh, for the Cowboys. Randy Gregory played a couple of games. Uh, not a couple of games. He played a few games. Uh, David Irving, I think he played one game. So losing David Irving is really not that big of a loss because uh, he didn't play that many games anyway. Uh, but Demarcus Lawrence is going to be huge. Marcus Lawrence is going to be huge and that he is going to be someone that is your main priority this offseason. That is your main priority, Cowboys, is to sign DeMarcus Lawrence. Because if he goes, probably somebody in the NFC East is probably going to sign him. That's probably what's going to happen. Uh, speaking of the NFC East, the Giants trade Olivier Vernon to the Browns uh, for Kevin Zettler. He is a offensive guard. Uh, they were already talking about Olivier Vernon was on the trading block, and it, it seems like that they made the deal, and the deal has been done. So Olivier Vernon going to the Browns, that happened today. The Broncos trade Case Keenum. To the Redskins for a seventh round pick. Well, actually, they got a sixth round pick. Uh, but Case Keenum is not the answer. I'm not a Redskins fan. By the furthest of, the, of, of my imagination. Shout out to Jennifer Pettit in the chat room. Thank you for tuning in. She said they need to pay that man, period. I agree with you. Uh, better to ease pain with weed than to get hooked on our chronics, uh, says Sarah Galloway. Yeah, there is properties to it. I think the NFL is just being old school. Like you're going, and I think this is going to be a, a a part that's going to be in their new deal that they come up with for their uh, bargaining agreement. I think this is going to be a major part of whatever agreement that they come up with because there is a lot of players that do it. Uh, they They're just able to, do it around when the testing time happens. But I think the problem is if you get on that plan, I, th- I believe they test you at random. So that that kind of throws you, that's going to throw you off. So I, I just think the NFL is not, I'm not going to say they're going to be forced to, but I think they will be greatly persuaded in, in changing their stance because then, you know the NFL is about money. You know they're about the bottom line. So then you can say, you can get sponsors. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's going to be big money in this for them. This is not a, like a cheap uh, a cheap decision for them. This is going to create more money for the NFL, which at the end of the day, we all know that's what it's all about. Is that that bottom line? That almighty dollar, that's what it's about when it comes to the NFL. So they're almost missing out on money by not changing their stance. And I believe that they will eventually. 
I'm not going to put a, a year on it. I'm not going to say how long it's going to take. But I truly think that they are going to change their stance. Um, so I don't know what I don't know what the Redskins are doing, but Case Keenum obviously is not the answer. He went to the Broncos. You see how that worked out. And then you trade for him. It's a low pick, so I get it. Shout out to ABM. He says, Ben tuned in driving. Thank you for tuning in. But Case Keenum is not the answer for any team. I don't care what team it is. I don't care what city it is. I don't care what planet it's on. Case Keenum is not the answer for any team. He he is just not, period. So other NFL news, there was a story that came out that talked about the 10 richest owners in the NFL. And I was very interested in this list because we would all think Jerry Jones would be in the top three. We would all think, or at least most of us, I would think, would think that Robert Kraft would be in the top three. Well, no, neither one of those are in the top three. David Tepper, the owner of the Panthers, is the richest owner in the NFL, $11.6 billion. He's the 118th richest person in the world. Number two is Stan Kroenke of the Rams. Number three is Stephen Ross of the Dolphins. Number four is Jerry Jones, tied with Shahid Khan of the Jaguars. Robert Kraft is six. Uh, Stephen Biscotti for the Ravens. Jance McNair of the Texans. Uh, the Benson family for the Saints. And then Jimmy Haslam of the Browns at $2.7 billion. So that list kind of, kind of threw me for a loop right there because I was not expecting that to be how, how the list was going to go. I was not expecting it to go that way because you have uh, Jerry Jones and the Cowboys, which is the most valuable franchise, but he's not necessarily the most valuable person. So that, that was an interesting story that I did want to share. Let's move over to basketball here. NBA talk. Title of today's show, like I said earlier, The King is Rising. Speaking of LeBron James, who has now surpassed Michael Jordan for fourth on the all-time scoring list. I got to give a round of applause to, to, to LeBron. And he has been playing for years. And I've said this before, as he continues to play, he's going to continue to break more records. I think he could be number one on that list. Now, number one is it's going to be a little bit of a further reach because you have, I believe right now, uh, let me pull up the list, but uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is number one. LeBron is... Pretty far uh, from Kareem. Kareem has 38,387. LeBron has 32,311. So above LeBron now is Kobe, Karl Malone, and Kareem. So I think he can do it. Uh, and this is this was a great moment for him because MJ was his idol, number one. But number two, you're able to pass a lot of people's goat. It almost really doesn't get any better than that. It, it really doesn't. That That is a huge moment in his career. Uh, and I would, I'm going to say that I'm proud, I'm proud of him. I'm extremely proud of, and he even said it himself, a kid coming from Akron, Ohio, watching your idol play, and then you're able to pass him. To me, it really doesn't get any any greater or any doper than that. Uh, that is that is greatness. That's greatness in its form, and we are watching greatness. As much as we want to to say maybe he's not the goat or whatever, he is still great, and we are watching greatness before our very eyes. 
Um, so now let's fast forward to what happened during that game, which was versus the Nuggets, as they were getting beat. Which this Lakers team, uh, we already knew, at least I knew that it was going to be a little bit of a struggle, that this was not going to be easy, that they were probably not going to make the playoffs this year, even though I think they could possibly uh, sneak in. Uh, But they're now saying that they're going to rest LeBron. They're going to put him on limited minutes. But during the game, uh, shout out to Holly Newsom. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, Sad Galloway, let me go back to this comment. He says, Stan Kroenke has his money and he's married to a Walmart heir. Uh, And yeah, you definitely got a lot of money when it comes to anything regarding Walmart. For sure. So, Rondo is sitting on the bench. Now, he's sitting not just on the bench, uh, not next to the players, but he is sitting next to fans on the bench. (laughs) And I believe, obviously, he's trying to make a point. And he disagrees with the way the franchise is, is going, a way, the way that it's being ran right now. And I don't know really how to feel about this. I do think that the Lakers were going to have struggles regardless. But it's almost like it's reading an all, reaching an all-time low. And, and that I think that does have to do partly with leadership. If you have your coach and he's just looking down He's looking down the sideline at Rondo, just sitting there on the bench, and he doesn't say anything. I think that that isn't. I think that's an issue. Uh, Rondo and Luke Walton already came out and said there's no issue. Walton said there will be no uh, disciplinary action taken. It is. It looks bad, though. The optics of the guy sitting next to fans. It looks bad. It, it really does. Uh, Now they're keeping LeBron on a minute restriction. I don't know how they convinced LeBron to even consider this with LeBron and and just the way that he is. So it it is it is interesting uh, that that this is this is going to happen. But I definitely would say uh, I'm not I'm not completely surprised because the. There was going to be some struggles. This was LeBron, Rondo, and a bunch of young guys on the team. So you really can't get your hopes up too high and just expect everything to go greatly and for them to make it to the finals or for them to make it to the playoffs or whatever it may be. You have to really, you have to truly be realistic of where they are at this point in time. Uh, so we'll see what happens for the remainder of the season. We've got, uh, what, a month left? Or probably less than a month left. I know one team that's not making the playoffs, my Mavs. So I don't have that much room to be trying to rag on the Lakers, but it's sports talk, so I'm, I'm going to definitely mention and talk about it. Uh, but the Mavs, who are looking to possibly get in the, in the lottery again this year, which that should be a part of the plan. So next year you have Parzingis, you have uh, Doncic. Uh, you should still have Tim Hardaway. Uh, and then from there, you know that gives you an opportunity to draft another star possibly, look at free agents possibly. But truly, I think the Mavs are, are far away away from actually doing anything in the Western Conference. And, it, and like I've said numerous times, Dirk, it's time to shut it down. We love you, Dirk. We love you here in Dallas, but it is time to release. Shout out to Tiffany Swartz and Hills. Thank you for tuning in. Shout out to DJ Knox. Uh, that being said, Luke is dead man walking. Facts. Facts. He is. He truly is. Uh, another, another story of one of the greats. One of the greatest dunkers ever, but also one of the greatest players ever.